In this video, I will go over and teach you guys three ways, maybe even more if I think of many on the spot, of how to brush your hair, comb your hair. I'm gonna go over combing your hair, I guess, because I have a comb after a stroke. And why is this the case? Well, Jeff, a lot of people may be asking, isn't that kind of like pretty common sense, easy to do? Well, after a stroke, sometimes because we do not have full use of both sides of our body and even mentally we may be having some difficulty with things like concentration right combing your hair may not necessarily be as intuitive as it once was because we've been doing it our whole life but now if we have less use of one side of our body like our arm or our hands then it may be much more difficult so how do you do it right recovery after a stroke of course i can use my non-stroke side to brush my hair and I can get it done that way. But our brain learns really quickly and it can also forget really quickly too. So what I'm trying to say is the less we use it, then the more that we will forget and we'll neglect it. Kind of like the saying, use it or lose it. And that definitely applies after a stroke. If you start to neglect using your arm, especially the side that has been affected by the stroke, it's not gonna work as well. And it's not even gonna have as much of a chance to get better in terms of recovery. So I'm going over three different methods, basically different levels of difficulty based on where you're at in your stroke, because as this is the internet, there are many different types of strokes. You guys watching along may in at be at different stages of recovery after a stroke. So hopefully I can cover all the ways to do it after a stroke. So with that, use it or lose it kind of approach. If you're in a hurry and you just need to get it done, then yeah, you can use your non-stroke side to comb your hair, right? But you can always try, even if you're using this method, which is, I guess, method number one, easiest level, is that you want to give your arm a job to do. Notice right here, it's kind of just like being rested on the pillow. It's not really doing as much. I can give it a job to do. So let's take the pillow away. Now, this will probably, for most of you, will cause or may cause your arm to fall off to the side. Now, what can you do for a job? Imagine you're like sitting on a stool, right? You kind of need to balance yourself. Those of you who are standing, you can probably use your arm to be balancing, basically. Standing, sitting, whatever. You can use your arm to support you, your stroke arm, what we call weight bearing. So basically, you want it to be applying some weight and support. If you think of like a camera tripod, it's kind of propped down and it's like a leg and it's providing support for the camera, right? Which would be your body. So for me, I can kind of push my arm down and use it as a support for me so that I have more stability as I move about and comb my hair. Now, of course, using this method number one, approach number one, combing your hair is pretty straightforward. You should have no problem. I forgot to mention the supplies, so it probably helps to have a mirror. I have one in front of me off camera off to the side there. And of course a comb or brush, whatever works best for you. Those of you who do not have like a really big mirror or the handheld mirror is another thing you can hold, but holding it is a tricky part, right? Cause that takes two handed task. One thing you can do for the easiest level is you can use like your smartphone. We all have a smartphone these days, turn on your camera and yeah, set it to selfie mode. I'm smiling because this is one of the few kind of, <laughs> times you can be using the selfie cam and not be embarrassed about it, right? And you can prop it like between your knees or something. And yeah, I'll, I'll do that actually. So I'll have two mirrors and you can brush your hair that way. Another trick is you can also zoom in. So if you have pinch to zoom, basically you can probably zoom in on yourself because sometimes these cameras can be very wide angle and really, really far away. So along that kind of give your arm a job to do, use it or lose it. Method number two is actually using your arm, your stroke arm to help and brush your hair. Now, this is level two. You're probably not ready to completely freely brush your hair with your arm just yet. So basically, you're gonna have to use your other hand, what we call hand over hand for support. So that's basically what it just sounds like. Try your best to place the comb or brush into your hand. Now, what can really help is to use a handle that is larger. So if you're using, imagine like a pencil versus like a really thick marker, right? It's gonna take more to hold that pencil because it's thinner than to hold a thick marker or like a really large like cylindrical shape that is the handle of your comb or your brush. So I think this was a pretty actually generous size, pretty large. 
Now, as some of you may have really tight hands, you kind of just really have to be really patient with opening your hand and even things like stress can help reducing that stress can help open up your hand to put that comb into your hand or your brush. I also have a video, I'll post that in my description on how you can open up your hand. And basically right after you do that, you can use that technique of opening up your hand after a stroke to place the comb into your hand. So those of you who have like a really tight hand, you can actually use that at your advantage because that tight grip can actually help you to hold the comb, at least for this activity. Of course, long term, we're gonna to wanna to be able to open up our hand, have like a open light grip for like, you know, being very, loose and tight depending on the activity that we're doing but for this very particular activity you can use holding a comb because of your tight spastic hand to your advantage okay how about the other end of the spectrum how about for those of you you try and hold a comb because you don't have a really tight grip it just falls right through right so i talked about using a thicker kind of brush you can also try and make it even thicker like maybe with like thickening it up using things like a towel and maybe like wrapping it around because you're gonna brush your hair every day right or those of you guys I guess like maybe like once every few days <laughs> if you care but you can like use like a towel or a cloth or even like a napkin like paper towel maybe yeah paper towel work going over it and then taping it off and that'll make it thicker so that you don't have to have such a tight grip to hold the comb you just have a really loose grip and for those of you who have like absolutely no grip and things just seem to just slide through your fingers because you have no complete muscle control over your hand just yet then you're gonna want to try to use it your other hand the non-stroke hand to support it and that works for two kind of uh, benefits one using your other hand to help tighten up the grip and practice what it feels like to have a grip and also to control your arm. So basically it's kind of like the guide, as you will, to help you brush your hair. Now I know in normal everyday life, nobody brushes their hair this way. They usually just use one hand, but this is good recovery. It's good stroke recovery approach, basically, so that we don't forget about it and use it or lose it, right? Try and reach for it with your hand as best you can. Those of you who have absolutely no function and control just yet, place it, place your stroke hand into place and just kind of guide your stroke hand with your non-stroke hand and just using it as a helper. Just be gentle and take your time, breathe. And a very big key to this is patience and repetition. So it's not gonna be like you do this one day and you're magically gonna wake up and be able to brush your hair, right? It's gonna be days, weeks, maybe even months of doing the exact same activity. And good thing it's combing our hair and we gotta look nice, right? And it motivates us so that we get a lot of practice in. I'm gonna use my other hand to guide my stroke hand. And the easiest thing to do starting with this is to start on the side of your stroke. So if I were to divide my body in half, it'll be this side, right? Because my stroke side, I don't have to reach across. And I generally brush and comb my hair over to the side. I like to do it that way. So I'm brushing across. Now, am I just letting my left hand, in this case, my non-stroke hand, take my stroke hand along for the ride? No, absolutely not. This is just a helper. It's kind of like picking up the slack. I'm going to, the best of my ability, even if it doesn't move a single, like, centimeter inch to actually try and mentally control my stroke arm more than anything and put in the effort so that i try and rebuild the connection after a stroke from thinking about it to actually doing it in physically in the real world with this kind of muscle control and because i'm thinking it in my head that's worth narrating for you guys watching on the video so that that's what you really want to emphasize try and mentally put in that thought in to control the stroke arm as you're doing these activities. With all these activities where you're using this hand over hand technique actually, you don't want to just have it passively be dragged along. You want to mentally try and move it. Okay, so what's method number three? Well, that's going to be the most difficult. And as you can guess, it's using your stroke arm to comb your hair or brush your hair. Pretty intuitive, pretty common sense. But some pointers kind of similar to approach number two is to do small strokes 
and kind of the distance between where you comb and also do it on the same side to start off with. Of course, you're not gonna completely finish the job, but the more you do, at least on one side, the more you can actually start to see more recovery and then you can start to challenge yourself and start bringing your arm across and bringing it farther away. Because if you think about it, that requires my hand to go farther distance from where it's originating at. So one thing to really note though about method number three before you guys click off and start brushing your hair is to watch how you may be compensating. So what I mean by compensating is basically you want it to look as natural as possible. So if I were to brush it with my non-stroke arm, I'm doing it kind of like really close to me. It doesn't look really weird and awkward. You want to avoid doing it like raising your arm like that and just looking really funny and doing it because this is not how you naturally brush your hair. There's kind of like a balance like between getting the job done and really kind of learning bad habits, right? You want to make it so that you have the actual muscles working because what's actually possible is you can get the job done by cheating, so to speak. And that's using other muscles, kind of like hiking up your arm and like using basically your non-involved muscles to compensate and substitute to do the job. So that may look something like this. So you notice how to comb my hair, I kind of cheated a little bit. I like hunched down, I even ducked my head a little bit. Well, yeah, I'm gonna be able to comb my hair this way, but it's not the more natural type of way. And it doesn't actually promote the full use of my arm to actually move around my head. Hope that helps. And as this is YouTube, you guys know what to do. Like and subscribe if this is really helpful content so I know to make more of this kind of stuff. And it's really all for you guys, you stroke patients and caregivers out there to hopefully what I learned from my insights and working my day-to-day -day and learning the stories from my patients and my experience to help you guys over on the internet all around the world. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and hopefully your hair looks a little bit better after this.